So here's an interesting question. Did barter predate the introduction of money? This is one of these like endless debates about the nature of money. I'll read a little bit the question. And I have my own view on this, but the real answer is nobody knows. Okay. I think it might be worth to add to this discussion the fact that leading scholars no longer believe that barter was a major form of trade in ancient times precisely because of the issue of coincidence of wants. Few people actually traded a hammer for a sheep. Instead, books like Neil Ferguson's The Ascent of Money and to a lesser degree Jack Weatherford's The History of Money argue that ancient people traded foods, tools, etc. in exchange for a promise of future rep rep reciprocity. Hence, it was a trade of an axe for a favor in the future, presumably of equal or greater wealth, as opposed to an axe for a pig. The fact that this ledger of favors lived in the collective memory of ancient people, quite like the stones of Yap, adds significantly to the discussion of Bitcoin and similar ledger-based mediums of trade. It also explains how an ancient economy could reasonably function in a complex manner. So this question touches upon one of those like repeating big questions about the origin of money. Is it barter? I have a pig, I want an axe, I have an axe, I want a tomato, I have a tomato, I want a cow. Or was it debt? So this this discussion is effectively saying, no, the alternative is debt, this ledger of favors. Hey, I've given you a cow, and I don't want anything right now, but you owe me like a cow's worth of stuff. And if you owe me a cow's worth of stuff, well, like it's debt, right? Like you have a liability. It might be not as formalized as a loan from your bank, but like you owe me this, and everyone in the village knows you owe me this. And so at some point, I'm going to come and ask for like six pigs, and you owe me six pigs because that's the kind of cow's worth of stuff. So I'm sure, uh, my guess is the answer is mixed. I think there's a little bit of direct barter. I think there's a little bit of the social memory stuff. And my hypothesis on this, which is totally data-free and um, difficult to prove, but as far as I can tell and everything I've read over my life about everyone else's hypothesis on this are also completely data-free because no one has invented a time machine to go back 10,000 years and see exactly how people were doing it. I suspect you had pseudo mediums of exchanges where you were using something like common trading pairs like so what do i mean by this if there's i don't know a thousand things in an ancient economy capers and raspberries and hammers and wheat and blah 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 i do agree that it is unlikely that there was a known rate between all those things. Oh, it's capers for raspberries and raspberries for hammers and what have you. Now, I do think some people might have just traded that stuff informally. Like, oh, yeah. oh look, I picked a lot of raspberries today. You have a lot of capers. Let's swap. And that clearly must have happened because it happens even today. Someone comes in to work and like, oh, I got these from my garden. Would you like some lemons? And I kind of feel vaguely obliged. And the next time when you go pick your tomatoes, you give them some tomatoes. Right, and so, and then it's kind of both things, right? Like both one of the, you've both bartered, but you've also done that whole like debt thing of oh, I owe him some lemons worth of stuff. But I suspect there was also some of the more commonly used things, work the pseudo currencies, and like people kind of knew how much things were worth in the more common agricultural project, products. So you might not know how many onions, how to represent onions and capers, but maybe you did know how to represent onions and goats and how to represent capers and goats and how to represent bales of hay and goats. And so, so things that were kind of more standardized and you could kind like for sure there are some even in a world of pure agricultural products, some agricultural products are more currency-like than others, right? Like they're more liquid and less likely to deteriorate. Right? A goat, a decent form of money because 
it's probably around in two weeks. Tomatoes are not, right? Like tomatoes, if you have a surplus of tomatoes, as as like, okay, great. I want your capers or I want your house, and here is like a metric ton of tomatoes. I'm going to do a metric ton of tomatoes. I'm not going to eat them. They're going to go bad. And then you're going to have my house, and I'm going to have some spoiled tomatoes. Whereas, like, okay, I want your house. Here's like 10 goats. Well, you can use them for milk, and someday you'll slaughter them, and cook them, and then they'll maybe breed them. There'll be other ones. It's like plausible that I change my house. I trade my house for goats, and I trade my tomatoes for goats. And like, but not just goats. There might be other things like. Some pseudo metal, some metals, and kind of pseudo currency, and maybe a cow. And you see this still in some countries today, where there are metrics of wealth that are measured in livestock. So, and this is not so. My gut again, I can't prove it. The economy of a modestly complex village or small town probably had all of these things going on, right? Like direct barter. Debt, aka I owe you something, and maybe it's formally recorded in some type of ledger, or maybe just informally recorded in the collective memory of the group. Now, Tonus did a great job. He brought in a big haul of raspberries. We all ate them. You know, we got to cover them the next few weeks, right? And some kind of pseudo mediums of exchange or units of account that are kind of the more common, more durable products. So that's my guess of how it is uh, happened. and But it is an ongoing question. It's not the first. This is like a big debate in, about the origin of money.